chat every Saturday morning from 9am. And we've got Glenn Rushton on the other side, uh, on the other end of this call. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning, Paul. How are you today? I'm um, good, thanks, Glenn. I just had George Reno on uh, behind the Mundane camp. He, uh, he just said, may the best man win. And uh, they're quite George. confident. They've got plan A, B and C for Geoffrey Horn next Friday. What, what's, how's the camp? How's the vibes? Mm -hmm. In the camp. Well, as Mike Tyson famously said, Paul, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got a T-shirt with that written on it, Glenn. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? No, it, it is good, and yes, it is good to go in with a plan. So, you know, we always do the same. You know, you, you always need to go in there with a strategy and uh, pack up plans and so forth. They don't always, of course, unfold as you want. It depends on, it is always a game of chess, and it depends on how well the other person plays as well. So I think it's going to be a really interesting fight. You know, if, if Anthony really turns up on the night, which I believe he will, mm -hmm. this is going to be one heck of a fight. Uh, well said. Being when you look, when you line things up here, you know, Jeff going up two divisions is a difficult ask. It's not the normal comeback fight to jump up two divisions and fight a multiple uh, former world champion. So that in itself is a difficult thing. And we've just got to wait and see how Jeff goes at that division. It's a, it's a bit of an unknown. Uh, I believe he'll cope well. I, I'm hoping Jeff will walk into the ring around 72 kilos. Sure. I think Anthony will probably walk in probably uh, at least four kilos heavier than that. He's got a second weigh in two hours before it's 75. He'll probably put on another kilo. So yeah, there's going to be a, def a definite difference there in size and, uh, and strength and weight. But, um, you know, Jeff's a very, always been a very, very tough guy, and I think he'll cope very well with that. He sure is. Now, how, is he, how did he pull up after the Crawford fight? He's over that now, put it right behind him, and... He's... Yeah, I think, you know, it's always lingers. Man, physically, he was unharmed in the fight. He suffered no damage whatsoever. He was never hurt in the fight. Didn't have a headache at all the night of the fight. Nothing the next day. It was as good as gold. So physically, no harm whatsoever. We, That's good. As you know, we're a bit mortified when they stop the fight. We thought, well, why are you stopping the fight? He's a world champion. We're plenty of big finish. So mentally... Naturally, it affects you because Jeff hates to lose. Um, yeah. That's probably going to be to Anthony's detriment. <laughs> I think, you know, Jeff is going to be doubly determined. He's going to come out there and you know, there's no way in the world, Jeff, whether it's, you know, whether you're playing tiddlywinks or poker or whatever it is, Jeff can't stand to lose. So yeah. it's that fierce competitiveness that makes him a great uh, boxer. Yeah. So he won't want to lose and, you know, he's well prepared. He had a bit of flu early in the campaign, but... We got over that now and he's in good shape. So he's going into this fight. We got through the last bar the other day with no cuts, no injuries whatsoever. So he's yeah. come through all of the sparring in terrific order this time, which has been great. Because normally there's always something. Beautiful. Yeah, so uh, uh, going into the last Crawford fight, <coughs> he had all the way through his hands were driving him nuts. He had, mm -hmm. had sore hands. He was getting blisters all the way through. He's had none of that this campaign. So the feet are good, the hands are good, the mind is good. So you know, I think we're looking, it's going to be spectacular. It's, That's all I can say, it's going to be spectacular. It, it sure is. It's going to be a great fight. A lot of people have, uh, have put the fight down. But in all, in all honesty, it's going to be a great fight. It's going to be a great spectacle, I've heard. A great undercard too to go yeah. with it. Jeff's, Jeff's younger brother, Jeff Horn's younger brother's on the card as well, I hear. He is, yeah, young yeah. Ben Horn, he's as tough as Teague Ben, he's one of those real rugged sort of guys, and uh, yeah, just good chin, you know, tough, and that's going to be, that's going to be a, a, a real good fight, it's a great matchup, uh, two guys have similar amateur experience uh, together, and I think they've had the same number of amateur fights, and you know, both making their debut, but you know, no doubt that uh, Ben's opponents from Townsville, they're always tough. Uh, I grew up and started boxing in Townsville, a lot of tough guys up there, so there's no doubt he will be a good competitor, and that should be an entertaining fight. And Ben certainly goes toe to toe with Jeff Horn, there's no doubt they've been doing it since they're kids, and uh, you know, they're still doing it now. Jeez, uh, in, uh, in the lead up to this, who's been uh, Jeff Horn's main sparring partners? I've varied it quite a lot, but he's had a great yeah. array of sparring partners. He's had Dennis Hogan, currently number one ranked mm -hmm. contender and mandatory challenger for the world title. He's had Nathan Weber is fighting for an Australian title the week after. He's had Cameron Hammond, 
you know, the Olympian who went to the Olympics yeah. with Jeff and is also fighting on the night, as you know. Sure, he sure is, uh, yeah. He's had um, Caesar and Monsad, he's had, you, oh, you name it, he's had, he's had them here. You know, the ball, Jeff has had uh, you know, an absolute brilliant range of sparring partners. Uh, none of them quite, of course, like Anthony Mundine, but then again, there is only probably one Anthony Mundine, as is, there is only one Jeff Horn. They're both, yep. both got very, I think, fairly unique styles of fighting, and it's not easy to get sparring partners that are similar to either of them, but yeah. they, they both done their very best, and sure. and uh, as I say, I think they're both very well prepared. I, I haven't seen Anthony as well prepared going into a fight for years, yeah. and I think that you can defy the years if you put the preparation in. Yeah. So look what he's done at this time, and I think, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see the fireworks go off next Friday night at Suncorp, and what better place you know, than a Friday evening yeah. you know, at the call from... Yeah, it's going to be a great night, uh, Glenn. I'll, I'll come and uh, I'll come and say hello, mate, if I get a chance. But look, may the best man win, Mundine or Jeff Horn. Good luck to you guys. Yeah, the only thing I will say, Paul, is uh, yeah, I know that you know Anthony likes his chocolates, you know, and he must be doing a little bit tough <laughs> on his lettuce and tomato. But Jeff has uh, been eating plenty of chocolate this time. He loves chocolate, just like there's something they've got in common. They both love chocolate. So uh, Jeff's certainly been having plenty. We were actually going on the plane down there a couple of weeks ago for a press conference. And yeah. They brought us around a big handful of those lint chocolates. And I said, mate, we should just touch a photo of these. Anthony and say, look what we're having. Yeah. Chop, what are you having? <laughs> but uh, no, it's just a tongue-in-cheek joke. But no, we're, he's really enjoyed the relaxation on the diet. And he can eat anything going into this fight, I can assure you. And yeah. he's taken advantage. So that, that's uh, giving him another degree of relaxation. But uh, let's see how it all pans out. I think you know, a guy ranked 18 in the world and on box track, a former world champion like him, they're two divisions higher. This is a serious test for Jeff Horn. It is, it is, this it is. It's going to determine where we go from here. Do we yeah. stay at, at this division? Do we go back you know, down? The, the, what do we do? But ultimately, as you know, my end game is to get Crawford back and beat him. But of course, we've got a couple of fights in between that, so we're just looking at what we do in the meantime. And we would seriously love to grab another world title, possibly at middleweight or, or junior mm -hmm. middleweight, wow. before we go back down to welterweight. That's certainly in the back of our mind, depending on how strong I think Jeff is at this division, because yeah. basically we are fighting at middle, even though it's a catch weight of mm -hmm. 71. Okay. It's in the middleweight category, so that's another 1.53 to get to and perform yeah. middleweight. Yeah, right. So there's a lot of things to be decided. I think yeah, we'll be sure. revealed next Friday night and okay. uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you up here, Paul, and no doubt the whole of Australia will be watching talk another epic moment in sport. Thanks a lot, Glenn Russian, for coming on Radio 2 BACR this morning, mate. Cheers, Paul. Thank you. And that was uh, Glenn Russian, the man behind Jeff Horn. He had to get the chocolate spit in. I like that. Uh, let's go to a break and we'll